Hello everyone! Welcome back to Elevate in Spirit. Today I will continue to talk about how powerful your imagination is. We've already talked about a lot in the past few episodes. In the last episode I talked about how I had a lot of financial difficulties in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. The Lord touched my life in 1968, but for about 30 years I did what God told me to do and was going in the right direction, but I didn't understand finance. My religious beliefs were getting in the way, and I overcame it by reading and meditating on scriptures about prosperity from 1996 to 1998. I've been making a point based on Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 which says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. When it says, when your mind has to be stayed upon him, I think it means, when your imagination has to be stayed upon him. That's where you conceive. Your imagination is your spiritual womb. That's where you conceive things. Miracles don't really come from the outside. You conceive them and give birth to them. So I talked about how I took these hundred or more Bible verses and thought about them for two years. Suddenly I understood how God wanted me to do well. Once I understood it on the inside, it was only a matter of time before it showed up on the outside. Now, let me show you this out of Psalms chapter 1, verse 1, which says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And in Psalms chapter 1, verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Here it says that we should think about God's word day and night. If we do that, watch what happens. While in Psalms chapter 1 verse 3 says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. It uses the example of a tree planted next to a river. When there is a dryness, the tree still gets nourishment because its roots go down into the ground around the river and pull nutrients from there. This is just saying that you'll be free and fruitful. You won't go through these dry conditions or be up and down like everyone else. It depends on how much you worship the Lord and think about His word every day and night. This is supported by Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. In both of these passages, the Bible promises wealth and success, as well as the ability to never go through a drought and still be able to get nutrients while everyone else is suffering. But this can only happen if you focus on the word. So what does it mean to meditate? Go to Psalms chapter 2, verse 1, and the verse says, Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? Did you know that the Hebrew word that is translated as imagine in Psalms chapter 2, verse 1, is also translated as meditate in Psalms chapter 1, verse 2? Putting all of this together, you get the idea that when you focus on the word, you're picturing it happening. Hearing that Jesus' stripes have healed you is one thing, but have you seen yourself get better? But meditating in it until you see yourself doing those things is a whole different thing. I pray that you realize what I'm saying. As an example, did you know that I saw a man come back to life? It was in Pritchett, Colorado, and it's a long story that I won't talk about here. But the sheriff was there getting his defibrillator and other things ready. I walked in and told him to wake up, and he did. He sat up and started talking right away. It was a wonder, and it made a lot of noise in Pritchett, Colorado. There were only 144 people living in the town, but suddenly 100 people started coming to church. Some of them came from outside of town, still. God told us in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, which says, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received freely give. This shouldn't be strange. We were told to do it, and I had seen dead people come back to life. But it hit me one day, 12 years later, that I hadn't seen anyone come back to life in 10 years. If you've never thought about something, you can't focus on it. The first step is to get the information inside you. 
Then I got it and saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. I had to make it my own, though, because in John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So it wasn't enough for me to just picture Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. I had to picture myself doing it as well. So I looked up everything I could find about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. It says that he yelled loudly. So I got to the point where I would say, in the name of Jesus, Lazarus come forth, and then I would act it out. Like I said, I've already used a lot of scriptures about the power of imagination. Anyway, I started doing these things, and I'm what they call a lucid dreamer. I read an article about this. You know, my friend dreams, and I'd say 90% of the time she doesn't even remember that she dreams. But I know she does because she talks in her sleep sometimes. I know she dreams, but she forgets it, and it's not very real. So, I was meditating about doing these things and seeing dead people come back to life, which is what Jesus told us we would do. Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. And I began to think about it, just like these lines in Psalms 1-2 and 2-1 say. I started using my imagination to see myself doing what I wanted to do, which was to bring God into the world and see the dead come back to life. This became so important to me that every night I dreamed that I was raising 10 to 15 or 20 people from the dead. I don't know how long that went on for, but it was at least six months or a year. I would just dream about seeing the dead come back to life all the time. This Bible verse will help you understand what I'm trying to say. In Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. That's talking about your imagination. Vision means being able to see something with your heart that you can't see with your eyes. And if you don't have a reason or a goal, you won't get there. You won't be limited in any way. You can go in any direction you want. Before we wrap up, I want you to remember this scripture. In Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, which says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. That's why I began to imagine things. I began picturing myself doing what God said I could do, and it's not an accident that I did it within a short time. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us on this journey of the power of imagination, and if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. As always, may your journey be filled with the abundant blessings of God. Until next time, thanks for watching. From Elevate in Spirit.